Welcome to the 1662 Fellowship of North America, where we promote the historic formularies of the Anglican tradition as the theological center of gravity for Orthodox Anglicanism in North America. My name is Isaac Rayberg. I'm the Archdeacon for Liturgy in the Anglican Diocese of All Nations and the Rector of All Saints Anglican Church in San Antonio, Texas. So this is our first video, and I wanted to introduce to you the 1662 Fellowship of North America. This is an initiative started by our diocese, the Diocese of All Nations, on behalf of our bishop, Bishop Felix Orgy. And uh, the, as I said in the introduction, we want to promote our formularies as that theological center of gravity. We're going to be using that phrase again and again in these videos. Uh, our plan is to have a new video for you every week and keep things relatively short in the videos um, so they're nice and bite sized for everybody. Uh, the rationale for forming this fellowship was primarily to curb theological confusion. Um, it's no secret that if you ask three Anglicans, you'll get five opinions these days. And so we wanted to look back to our formularies as an objective standard for our theology, that theological center of gravity. And at the same time, we've been seeing some wonderful efforts of um, going back to the sources, recovering original documents. Um, I'm reminded of the Reformation cry of Ad Fontes, or um, a more recent um, term, Ressourcement, uh, where we are rediscovering and reintroducing to much of the public some of these older documents from our tradition. But we also want to do these things, we want to have this theological center of gravity look back to our historic formularies while respecting both continuity and the fact that the church has reformed. We want to respect continuity and reform. So the purpose of our fellowship, once again, is to promote the formularies as our theological center of gravity. And as we do this, we want to, to facilitate a network or a fellowship of folks who use the classical formularies, especially people that are using the 1662 Book of Common Prayer. We want to educate the Anglican public. We want this to be a ministry whereby people grow in their knowledge of our tradition and of the fact that it is a biblical tradition and how this does relate to our, our robust history as Anglicans. And then we want to also equip church planters and evangelists to do their important work while using the formularies of our tradition. So what are those formularies? Well, first of all, it is the 1662 Book of Common Prayer. I have here my international edition of the 1662. And uh, along with that Book of Common Prayer, we have the 39 Articles of Religion, typically bound with the uh, prayer book, as well as the historic ordinal, and again, bound with the prayer book. So really, your formularies are all here in one volume. But we also supplement those authoritative formularies with the two books of homilies. Here is my uh, reprint of the Griffiths edition from the 19th century. And the writings of the early English divines, those early theologians and pastors of the uh, 16th and 17th century who really give us the mind of our reformers and how our reformers applied the great, great heritage they received from the church fathers in the in an English context. So when we talk about this being the theological center of gravity, what do we mean? You know, this is not a call to turn back the clock, to somehow make all of us look like we are uh, worshiping back in the uh, late 1500s or early 1600s or even mid 1600s or even 1700s, 1800s, 1900s, none of, none of those things. That's not what we're here for. Rather, we want to show that these formularies apply today in our contexts, our various contexts, um, adapted for our current circumstances. And this is supported by both the fundamental declarations of the Anglican, uh, Anglican uh, Church in North America and the Jerusalem Declaration of the GAFCON movement. So in Articles 6 and 7 of our fundamental declarations, we explicitly uphold the Articles of Religion, the Ordinal, 
and the 1662 as a standard for Anglican liturgy and theology. And the same thing is found in the Jerusalem Declaration in Articles 4, 6, and 7. Um, I'll put a link to those documents at the bottom of the show notes so that everybody can see those. And we recognize in, in this fellowship that there is a lot of liturgical diversity um, in our province and, and really for, 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 for my own uh, context in our diocese as well. And so we want to respect that liturgical diversity while we promote the formularies as the theological lens through which we use and interpret later liturgical uh, resources, later liturgical developments. Um, we also have um, a culturally, linguistically, and ethnically diverse diocese and province, and we want to support this as well. Um, one of the beauties of the 1662 is that it has been translated into so many languages. And so um, our, our folks that, um, that speak Igbo or one of the other Nigerian languages have the 1662 in their language. Um, we, we have some folks that speak Hebrew in our diocese, and there is a 1662 in Hebrew, and the list goes on and on. We can find them in many, many languages. And so one of the things we'll be doing from time to time is having... Um, some videos of some services, some prayer services from the prayer book done in those other languages that we have, especially in our diocese, but also other folks in the province, feel free to reach out and we can do the same for you. And then finally, um, we want to use this fellowship as a way to provide some forms of continuing education or other educational programs based on the formularies to help both lay formation and clerical formation. So you, if you're saying, hey, this sounds good, where do I start? Well, the first thing I would recommend is that you do purchase a copy of the 1662. I recommend the international edition for our context and get to know this liturgy and especially get to know the articles of religion as well, the ordinal and some of these other appendices. We'll talk about that in some more detail in the future, but also pick up an edition of the Book of Homilies. Again, this is my, uh, my reprint of the Griffiths edition, which was originally published in the 19th century. Mine's a very recent reprint of that because it is public domain. Um, you can find the Griffiths edition online. Um, but there's also a, a, a wonderful critical edition by Gerald Bray that was published not too terribly long ago. And then Lee Gaddis of the Church Society uh, published a modernization of the first book of homilies. And again, we will discuss... The book, of, the book of homilies uh, in future episodes in some more detail. Um, thank you so much for uh, listening to this, for watching this. Uh, do subscribe, do hit like, and share this widely so that we can expand this uh, center of gravity that is our formularies throughout Orthodox North American Anglicanism. Thank you so much.